Hello everyone, welcome back to our history series. Today, we will delve into the life and legacy of a remarkable figure in African history, Julius Cambridge Nyerere. Born on April 13, 1922, Nyerere was a prominent Tanzanian anti-colonial activist, politician, and political theorist who played a pivotal role in shaping Tanzania's history. Join us as we explore his early life, his key contributions to the Tanzanian independence movement, his time as prime minister and president, and his enduring legacy as the father of the nation, Julius Cambridge Nyerere. Born on April 13, 1922, was a prominent Tanzanian anti-colonial activist, politician, and political theorist. He played a significant role in shaping Tanzania's history. Governing Tanganyika as Prime Minister from 1961 to 1962 and then as its first president after it became a republic in 1962. He continued to lead Tanzania as president until 1985, Nyerere was a key figure in the Tanganyikan independence movement. He co-founded the Tanganyika African National Union TANU, in 1954 and championed non-violent protests, inspired by Mahatma Gandhi's example, to achieve freedom from British colonial rule. His efforts culminated in Tanganyika gaining independence in 1961, as president, Nyerere pursued decolonization and aimed to foster unity among the country's diverse ethnic groups, including indigenous Africans, Asians, and Europeans. He encouraged the establishment of a one-party state and envisioned an East African federation with Uganda and Kenya. Although this initiative did not come to fruition, Following the merger of Zanzibar with Tanganyika in 1964, Tanzania was formed, and Nyerere emphasized national self-reliance and socialism. His political philosophy, known as Ujamaa, focused on communal ownership and social cohesion. Under his leadership, major industries and companies were nationalized, and significant investments were made in education and healthcare. However, some of his economic reforms faced challenges, leading to food shortages and dependency on food aid in certain regions. Nyerere's government provided support to anti-colonialist movements across southern Africa and played a role in ousting Ugandan President Idi Amin during Tanzania's war with Uganda in 1978-1979. Although he was respected for his anti-colonial stance and efforts to unify Tanzania, Nyerere's leadership was not without controversy. Accusations of dictatorial governance and economic mismanagement have been directed at him. Nonetheless, within Tanzania, he is deeply revered, affectionately referred to as Mwalamu, teacher, and regarded as the father of the nation. Early Life, Childhood, 1922-1934 Julius Cambridge Nyerere was born on April 13, 1922, in Watango, a part of the village of Budiama in Tanganyika's Mara region. He was the son of Nyerere Burrito, the chief of the Zanaki people, and Mugaya Nyangambi, his fifth wife. Nyerere was one of 25 surviving children out of Burrito's 22 wives. Raised in the polytheistic beliefs of the Zanaki, he lived in a compound with his mother and siblings, where he helped with farming and herding goats and cattle, schooling, as the son of a chief, Nyerere had the opportunity for education. He attended the native administration school in Mwizenj, Muzoma, and excelled in his studies. His academic success allowed him to secure a government scholarship to attend the prestigious Tabora Government School. During this time, he also became interested in Roman Catholicism. His elementary schooling concluded in 1936 with outstanding exam results. In 1943, Nyerere began studying at Makarari College in Kampala, Uganda, where he focused on a teacher training course. He was an exceptional student, won literary competitions, and engaged in debating and religious activities. 
His deepening Catholicism and exposure to liberal philosophers like John Stuart Mill influenced his political views. Nyerere's interest in socialism and African empowerment started to take shape during this period. After three years at McCarry, he graduated with a diploma in education. After completing his studies, Nyerere returned to Budiama, where he built a house for his widowed mother. He taught at St. Mary's, a mission-run school, and engaged in political activities, becoming treasurer of the local branch of the Tanganyika African Association TAA. Nyerere became involved in debates and public discussions on political issues, advocating for African independence and challenging colonial policies. He also began a romantic relationship with Maria Gabriel, a teacher at Nigina Primary School, as his political activism grew, Nyerere worked on rewriting the TAA's constitution and mobilized opposition to colonial policies that favored the white minority. Father Richard Walsh, director of St. Mary's, encouraged Nyerere to consider further education in the United Kingdom. Eventually, Nyerere took the University of London's matriculation examination and received funding to study abroad. Despite concerns about leaving his family behind, this phase of Nyerere's life laid the foundation for his later political career and ideologies, marking the beginning of his journey towards becoming a prominent anti-colonial activist, politician, and leader in Tanzania's struggle for independence. Edinburgh University, in April 1949, Nyerere embarked on a journey from Dar es Salaam to Southampton, England. From there, he traveled by train to the city of Edinburgh. During his time in Edinburgh, he resided in lodgings designated for colonial persons in the Grange suburb. Starting his studies at the University of Edinburgh, Nyerere pursued a Master of Arts degree with a focus on subjects like English literature, political economy, social anthropology, economic history, British history, constitutional law, and moral philosophy. Although his academic performance was not outstanding, he successfully completed all his courses. Nyerere's experience in Edinburgh was positive, and he formed strong friendships with students from various backgrounds, including Nigerians and West Indians. Although being one of the few black students from British East Africa, he did not encounter significant racial prejudice. He also participated in part-time work to support himself and his family in Tanganyika, political activism, founding the Tanganyika African National Union TANU, returning to Dar es Salaam in October 1952, Nyerere played a crucial role in the political scene. He built a home for himself and his fiancée, Maria, whom he married in January 1953. He took a teaching position at St. Francis College, where he taught history. During this period, he increasingly engaged in politics and was elected as the president of the Tanganyika African Association TAA, in April 1953. In July 1954, with the assistance of Oscar Cambona, Nyerere transformed the TAA into the Tanganyika African National Union TANU, a new political party with a focus on advocating for Tanganyikan independence from the British Empire. TANU became a significant political force under Nyerere's leadership. He drew inspiration from Mahatma Gandhi's non-violent approach to independence struggles and emphasized the importance of multiracialism, assuring that the country's European and Asian minorities would not be excluded from an independent government. Nyerere's determination for Tanganyikan independence caught the attention of the colonial government, who closely monitored his activities and actions. In March 1955, he represented Tanu at the United Nations Trusteeship Council in New York City, where he ambitiously stated the country's desire for self-governance well before the recommended 20-25 to 25 year timetable. Upon returning from New York, he resigned from his teaching position due to pressure from the government and began working as a translator and tutor for the Marinol Fathers. Tanu continued to grow in influence and support, 
with its membership expanding from 100,000 in 1955 to 500,000 in 1957. Premiership and Presidency of Tanganyika Premiership of Tanganyika, on December 9, 1961, Tanganyika celebrated its independence, and Julius Nyerere became the country's first prime minister. During this period, the assembly proposed a bill restricting citizenship to indigenous Africans, which Nyerere strongly opposed, comparing it to the racial ideas of Adolf Hitler and Hendrik Verwoerd. He threatened to resign if the bill passed, which eventually led to his resignation in January 1962. He shifted his focus to restructuring TANU, Tanganyika African National Union, and promoting a pattern of democracy that aligned with the nation's interests. Rashidi Kawawa succeeded him as prime minister. In the following months, Tanganyika concentrated on addressing domestic issues. Nyerere advocated for self-reliance and hard work, emphasizing community projects in the national youth service called Jeshi La Kujenga Taifa JKT, to engage young people in public works and paramilitary training. He introduced the Ujamaa policy, reflecting his ideas about African socialism, to convert freehold land ownership into a leasehold system that recognized communal land ownership. The government also took steps to Africanize the civil service, appointing indigenous Africans to positions formerly held by British civil servants, presidency of Tanganyika, a year after independence, on December 9, 1962. Tanganyika became a republic, and Nyerere assumed the position of president. During this time, he played a significant role in African affairs, attending various conferences, such as the Afro-Asian Solidarity Conference and the founding session of the Organization for African Unity OAU. He supported the idea of a unified Africa but emphasized regional confederations as a short-term step toward unification. Nyerere also attempted to unite Tanganyika, Kenya, and Uganda into an East African Federation, which ultimately did not materialize, he closely monitored developments in Zanzibar, fearing potential influences that could impact Tanganyika. When the Zanzibar Revolution occurred in January 1964, he quickly recognized the new government and provided assistance when requested. Throughout his presidency, Nyerere remained committed to the principles of non-violence and multiracialism, welcoming non-indigenous members into Tanu and his cabinet. Despite facing challenges and criticism, he remained determined to build a united nation that transcended ethnic and religious boundaries. Presidency of Tanzania, Unification with Zanzibar After the Zanzibari Revolution, Abed Karum declared himself president of a one-party state and started redistributing land owned by Arabs among African peasants. Many Arabs, Indians, and British residents left the island. While the Western powers were hesitant to recognize Karum's government, the Soviet Union, Eastern Bloc, and China quickly offered support and aid. Nyerere was displeased with the Western response and believed that they failed to understand the reasons behind the Zanzibari revolt. In April, Nyerere visited Karum, and they announced the political unification of Tanganyika and Zanzibar. Nyerere emphasized that the move was driven by pan-Africanist ideology rather than Cold War power struggles. The unified entity was initially named the United Republic of Tanganyika and Zanzibar, but later, a competition was held, and the winning proposal was, United Republic of Tanzania. The structure of the Zanzibari government remained unchanged, with Karum and his revolutionary council in charge. However, Zanzibaris were given significant representation in the Tanzanian government to respect their national pride, domestic and foreign affairs, in the 1965 general election, Tanzania had its first presidential vote, which Nyerere won with nearly 97% support. The one-party state allowed Tanu candidates to stand for parliamentary seats, and the party's national executive selected multiple candidates for most constituencies. 
providing some level of democratic choice. Nyerere continued to prioritize education for self-reliance and introduced mandatory national service for secondary school graduates in the Jeshi La Kujenga Taifa JKT. In foreign affairs, Nyerere established close ties with China, drawing criticism from Western powers. He pursued greater integration between Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya through the East African community. Tanzania supported various liberation movements from Southern Africa, such as for Limo. Nyerere's principled stance on issues like the independence of Rhodesia and apartheid South Africa strained relations with the United Kingdom and the United States, but he remained committed to his convictions. The Arusha Declaration, in January 1967, Nyerere presented the Arusha Declaration, outlining Tanzania's commitment to building a democratic socialist state and emphasizing self-reliance. He nationalized banks, insurance companies, and various industries, seeking to create a more egalitarian society. The declaration also introduced a code of conduct to curb corruption among Tanu and government leaders. The Arusha Declaration gained significant popularity in Tanzania, but it faced opposition from some politicians. Nyerere remained committed to his vision of African freedom and was willing to consider retirement to encourage new leadership. However, he ultimately stood unopposed in the 1970 election and was re-elected with strong support, post-presidential activity, after stepping down from the presidency, Nyerere remained active in various international engagements. In July 1987, he returned to the University of Edinburgh to attend a conference on post-independence Africa and gave an opening address on the making of constitutions and national identity. He was later invited to chair an international committee on the economic challenges faced by the Global South, where he collaborated with Manmohan Singh, the future Indian Prime Minister. In August 1990, Nyerere stepped down as the chair of CCM, Chama Chamapinduzi. Before his departure, he advocated for Tanzania's transition into a multi-party democracy, believing that competition with other parties would encourage CCM to improve, as he noticed the collapse of the Eastern Bloc, perestroika in the Soviet Union, and economic reforms in China. His calls for reform led to the emergence of rival parties, but CCM remained dominant. During this time, freedom of speech expanded, and new newspapers emerged. Nyerere also engaged in discussions about the potential transition to a three-government federation, including independent state governments for both Zanzibar and the mainland. Although he opposed this idea, it was later adopted to address calls for Zanzibari autonomy. He remained involved in CCM politics and supported Benjamin Kappa's leadership. However, Nyerere eventually indicated his intention to withdraw from active politics. In his final years, Nyerere continued to participate in international affairs. He attended the 1994 Pan-African Congress in Uganda and delivered a speech marking the 40th anniversary of Ghanaian independence, expressing renewed support for Pan-African ideals. He also reflected on his presidency and admitted to making mistakes but remained committed to the principles of the Arusha Declaration. In 1995, the United Nations asked Nyerere to mediate and help end the Burundian civil war. He established the Mwalamu Nyerere Foundation, modeling it after the U.S. Carter Center, and facilitated negotiations between competing factions. He insisted on inclusivity and civilian political institutions as key to lasting peace in Burundi. The negotiations continued even after his death, with Nelson Mandela taking over his role as mediator. In September 1999, Nyerere traveled to England for medical care, where he was diagnosed with terminal leukemia. He passed away on October 14, 1999. Tanzania mourned his death, and he was honored with various ceremonies, including requiem masses and funeral processions. Nyerere's legacy as an African nationalist, 
Pan-Africanist, an advocate for democracy and freedom remains an influential part of Tanzania's history. Conclusion, Julius Cambridge Nyerere's life and contributions continue to inspire people across Africa and the world. His commitment to unity, self-reliance, and social justice earned him the enduring title of Mwalamu or teacher. As we remember his legacy, let us reflect on the values he stood for and strive to make the world a better place for all, just as he did for Tanzania. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. Stay tuned for more fascinating stories from the past.